Round 15 served as a reminder that the gap between Hawthorne's best and worst needs a bit of work, the team falling to Gold Coast in a disappointing display across the board. But as always, we're back to recap all the action from the past weekend, so let's get down to business. My name is Nick Mason, and joining me as always, my co-host Tiz, and mate, a thoroughly average Sunday in front of the telly in the end. Yes, yeah, I watched Box Hill, and uh, it was a great game till half time. we were in it. Yep. Looking good. Brandon Ryan was having shots from everywhere, not kicking goals, mind you. Mm, but he looks lively. Jed Rule dropped one onto the left, post high from, well, it was probably post high, but it was a beautiful mm-hmm. left footer from 50, and mm-hmm. I'm thinking, geez, this is all right. And then it was all downhill from there, and it was very reminiscent of the Box Hill game in the AFL match. I think that was the most disappointing aspect for me, was the fact that I spent Sunday watching two identical losses <laughs> in, in many respects, and that was a little bit deflating, to be honest. Well, I mean, Hawthorne started really well. Um, so did Box Hill, that's the point. Yeah, but we got out of the gates well, and I'm thinking, oh, Gold Coast are still uh, you know, getting over their shock loss. and mm-hmm. And then they just started putting pressure on the ball carrier and we kept up giving it giving it back to them cheaply. And at the end of it, we just kept kicking it back to them. Oh, the, the, the half-forward line was an absolute dead zone. Just no sense of connection from the wing to the forwards. It just nothing was coming off. And at some points, you felt like we were just pinpoint passing it back to them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, a couple of the... Suns players were obviously very, very good, and and I didn't really expect them to be as good as they were. No, well, you wouldn't. With with the week before against Carlton, I mean, it feels like they had their down week the week before, and then we turned up, having looked so good against Brisbane. And and like I said in the intro, our gap between the best and worst this club can bring was really stark on this occasion. So are we going to bring out the the little uh, community chess card? You know, if you have a buy, you win. I mean, you don't win the following week. I was a bit confused there for a second. I thought someone was winning a beauty contest. (laughs) Didn't know what you're on about. Well, you know, everyone's coming out and saying uh, everyone who's had the buy has lost. That's it. That's the deal. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, so knee-jerk reaction then. Get rid of the buy. Change everything. And then there's people who go, oh, well, two teams who had the buy won. But they were playing other teams that had had the buy as well. So it doesn't <laughs> doesn't work. But if you do go through the list of games, there's only our upset against Brisbane and mm-hmm. and uh, maybe the Essendon game that went against the odds. So what I'm saying is, do we just look past this game as being oh, a young team, come on. interstate? Going too easy on them. Or... Hawthorne, anywhere north of Sydney, they just <laughs> treat it as a buy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I think you're giving them a pass, and I don't think that's acceptable. This was not an acceptable performance. It wasn't 170 points, was it, Nick? I mean, <laughs> Well, that's the measure, is it? <laughs> oh, well, I guess it's not West Coast. Yeah, well, should be, we should be thrilled. Not that bad. Yeah, well, God, canary down the mine stuff there. <laughs> I mean, what are we doing if we're comparing ourselves to that? I heard he had a presser today, Simo. Yes. And I also heard that it's going to cost him a fortune if they if he cuts out early. I mean, look, what, what other position can they take? They've said that they're right behind him. That's usually where the knife goes in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, it's too expensive to, to change course for them. But my point is, mate, we should not be Emotionally comparing... Emotionally or <laughs> financially? We should not be comparing ourselves to that mob. Remember, once upon a time, we thought, oh, yeah, look... We don't want to finish last, but at least we get Harley Reid. We I couldn't guess, even manage it now. It, well, exactly. You have to be worse than that. Like, Imagine that. Yeah, we'd have to no get. No way. We'd have to get U.S. Congress to give us some money for the amount of tanking we'd have to get through. <laughs> but seriously, this was unacceptable from Hawthorne, and you can put it down to the buy, whatever you want to put it down to. We can't just let it pass because there are only a few guys that really. I looked over right. the stat sheet, mate. And I, I just, some of the players for us, dead set, I could not even remember them being out there. Yeah, a little bit meek, were they? <laughs> a little bit meek. Our, our rucks Two were very touches. poor. Two touches, what's going on? Well, I mean, they've got a very good ruckman, and yeah, he's their but, captain. But, mate, meek with two disposals for the game, Reeves with seven touches for just six metres gained, <laughs> and only one mark between them. Come yeah, on, mate. They're, yeah. they're, well, they're I think two of the was, tallest guys out there, and well, they can't mark the footy. Isn't it like three marks between our... All our tools, oh. forward of forward of centre. Yeah, oh, I think Mitch Lewis took two. Yeah, 
himself. The three, yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay, there, you, there it is. Yeah. And then Bruce showed his experience and just held his position, and the guy who gave up the mark, he was yeah. just ropeable. Mm-hmm. That was quite funny. But at times, Bruce didn't even look like he was out there. He was just anonymous. Well, he had company. Frankly, like I said, yeah, I but then at the least list. he bobbed up and kicked a goal. Yeah, and... true, true. So right. what went wrong? The whole game plan was just ah, uh, just you, you. You do wonder. Is it just what... no Sicily, no Hawthorne? Well, that's it. That's what I was going to get at. You do wonder the kind of contribution he makes, not only only in terms of skill. We had a question here from Tom at Hawk Talk Pod. Do we miss Sicily's skill or leadership more? Obviously, both incredibly important, but but which one is a bigger loss? It well, does I, seem thought, to I be. thought Dylan Moore played quite well. I mean, I yeah. don't want to knock him for his leadership abilities. I thought that was pretty good. No, but it, it's not necessarily about Moore. It's the absence of Sicily that's the point. Yeah. And it does seem to make a difference because, I mean, you know, it can't be a coincidence that we get towelled up by Port the way that we do and then it happens against the Suns too. They're the vastly different opposition in terms of quality and yet it happened again. So we had uh, four guys who outperformed their normal output. Really? Four? Yeah. That's pretty high. I didn't expect that. Day, Scrimshaw, Hardwick, and Seamus. Really? Okay. Seamus had a lot of turnovers. Still, Still one the stats of his better performance. I want to talk to you about Scrimshaw. 31 touches at 90%. Sounds pretty good. It sounds fabulous. Yeah. But you and I both know, having Do watched I? the game. Yes. Some of the intent and the defensive efforts were no good. Yeah, it's either concentration or intensity or... Yeah, it's that word intensity, I think. that that Just the stuff that doesn't get recorded on the stat sheet, that will... It'll never be recorded anywhere except to the naked eye, except if you're looking really closely and you're like, nah, that was trash, did not like that. But he just... It just feels like he doesn't move fast enough. Yeah, sometimes. It feels like you need to hire him a barista... <laughs> And he has his own personal barista, maybe in the stands. Okay. And he goes over and takes a, you know, a ristretto or something. <laughs> All right, okay. And then wanders back on the foot. He just need, seems like, there were, I forget the bloke's name. I think he was a North Melbourne player. But they used to give him a red M&M. And they told what? him. Yeah. And they told him, psycho- you'd love this. Psychologically, this little red M&M. He felt that that was like a pill that made him a better footballer. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that North Melbourne at some point signed Pac-Man. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to... Oh, gosh. Anyway, I'm so frustrated I can't remember his name. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Now, I, for the record, have effort, never heard this his before. His effort would double. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah. It absolutely is. But that's... And what I'm saying in, in a roundabout way is it's all between the ears for Jack. It could be, it could be. By the way, if anyone knows what the hell you're on about, because I know that the name's on, on the tip of your tongue, if anyone knows what this is about, at Hawk Talk Pod on Twitter, let us know. So Scrimmer is one of those players who is frustrating, but also very, very good, mm. but just cannot get to that next level, and he doesn't have uh, the um, confidence of his teammates. Yeah. I don't think. Do you? No, that, that seems to be the case. Yep. Uh, Whereas Will Day, chuck him to half back flank. Yeah. In the second quarter, got 10 touches, all of them magnificent, yeah, all no, of them pivotal. He was superb. But we still couldn't make the scoring chain work. No, no. Well, it wasn't his fault. Will Day was saving us and getting us out of jail a few times there. 29 touches at 86% disposal efficiency, 9 marks, 15 pressure acts, deployed in defence, as you say, to shore up some relief. And he definitely had an impact there. He was given an assignment and he uh, stepped up. 11 intercepts, only Hardwick bedded him with 12. Uh, in terms of pressure points, and that's where you're looking for guys trying to impact the game, I thought Newcomb did struggle at times, mm-hmm. but his pressure acts were very high, yes. as were Dylan Moore and and uh, Connor Nash. But no one matched, and I find this a little bit irksome, Roses, who kicked three goals too. He well, he had the almost the highest pressure points on the ground mm. for the Suns. So get a guy who can do both, basically. Attack and defend. Yeah. It's just... And he got some easy goals too. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to talk about Blake Hardwick? Thirty-eight touches. 
that might be a career high. I'd have to double check that. Yeah, well, his kick ins weren't too bad, were they? Well, that's it. He he was obviously playing as a defender. He got absolutely hammered by the Suns on the rebound. Uh, which is why I was getting so much of the footy, because uh, Hawthorne had it down there a lot. Uh, but Dimmer, yeah, he did, did take a lot of the kick-ins. Still, 76% disposal efficiency, not bad. If you've got to have the footy, you've got to use it well. 12 intercepts, team high 10 rebound 50s, a team high 561 metres gained. Yeah, and to be honest, the score flattered us. Um, yeah, it did. King should have kicked a lot more than he did. Mm-hmm. And uh, what is it with Casbolt and playing Hawthorne? They... It frustrates me. Continuously. Look, whether it was going to be King, Casbolt, and all the coaches, I thought without Sicily, one of them was going to get us. But in the end, it was just a full team performance by the Suns and, and the inverse for us. We barely played our brand of footy. We just did not get it going. And the commentary kept on saying how much the Suns were stifling us. Mm. I we don't had know. the ball. We well, took yeah, bad options. Exactly. I don't know and about all that. And then at some point, we decided that we weren't going to really go all out attack. Yep. And we lost options forward of the football and then mm-hmm. Mitch Lewis couldn't get anywhere near it. Yeah. Like double teamed. He's trying to get out over the back, which was a good idea, but they never kicked it there. Mm-hmm. Very, very frustrating for all those people who turned up at the ground. Yeah. Well, they're not having much joy up there in Queensland, the well, Hawks fans. We don't go that often. And then no, when we but- do, like I said, yeah. we treat it like a bye. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, two tackles inside 50 for the game. That, to me, is unacceptable. It wasn't down there a lot. No, doesn't matter. doesn't matter. When it does get down there, you have to do more to keep it there. One I, from Moore, one from Bruce. I felt like uh, there might be an inquiry from AFL House into this game. Oh, yeah. How come? Because we won the free kick count, mate. Did we? Yeah. Wow, how much by? 20 to 11. No. 20 no. to 11. I did not even notice that. Yep. Maybe I was too depressed. 12 <laughs> frees in our midfield. Wow. To four. That's unheard of for us. Yeah. It's uh, it's quite quite interesting. Anyway, they had an expected score of 113. They actually scored 101. We had an expected score of 50, and we got 34. Yeah, wow. Well. So, for all the good we did against Brisbane mm-hmm. and how well we managed that game, this was a real well, sobering, uppercut wasn't it? to the confidence. Yeah, absolutely. Where does this sit? I know this is a depressing question. Where does this sit in terms of our losses this year? Because I saw some people on ah, social... completely forgettable. Like, they do this to us every year, mate. Well, that's true. I, I saw some people on social media saying this is our worst for the year. Oh, I'm sorry. I remember the Sydney game. Sydney was pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I think of. Well, the as well. Essendon game where we all felt like we had a really good chance and yeah. then yeah. fell in a heap. I said on our, on our mid season review podcast, patreon.com slash talk talk pod, that uh, the Frio one was pretty bad. They're all interstate, apart from <laughs> yes. the Essendon one. That's a that's yeah. a sign of a young team, you know, they're just not getting it going. Yeah. Well, I, I wanna see I guess in in ways we've, Ooh, we've done this is who you want to see in the team is it no 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 I'm not getting to that yet I want to see his fight back because I got my red pen out ready I, I want to see Sam Mitchell conjure up something when clearly the opposition has it all on their terms and playing their style and nullifying our plan A I keep on banging on about it week after week where is the plan B here when things really aren't going our way we don't seem to have an answer I told you. Frost forward, cause he back. I don't know why he didn't do it. Oh, boy. Okay, what do you think of Frost? Ah, oh, it's fine. That's how he plays. <laughs> At least he was competitive. Yeah, well, is that the pass mark? What did, he, what did he run at? He ran at 78% disposal efficiency. Okay. He had five contested, five non-contested, six intercepts, two marks, pressure points only 18, but I thought he played. Tom on ground's 96, so he took a huge amount of work. But look. Um, Weddle had one touch in the second half. Yeah, not great. I don't want to pot, guys, because Ichki had one touch in the second half. Mm-hmm. But having said that, Sam Frost is meant to be a leader at the back there. He should be calling for the ball. Correct. Uh, this prompts a question from uh, Views from the Nosebleeds. Do we actually lose anything if DGB comes in for Frost? I feel like DGB is less likely to really butcher the footy. That leads us nicely into, into the Box, Box Hill recap. Yep. Well, of course, he played forward and kicked a goal. All right, then. Get him in the side. Is that the point? (laughs) 
No. Is that what you're telling me? Was that in the last five minutes? Yeah, it was late in the game. I was drifting off. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Jeez. Headlines are Ward and Long play against Carlton. Please. Yeah, yep. Has to happen. Cooper Stevens is finally finding his groove. He's up and down. He's up and down. He will get there. I believe in that. But... Yeah, this week, 24 touches, one goal, one. He's Last... labouring. He's labouring. Yeah. The, the game against Brisbane, from memory, he was pretty quiet. And then the week before that, he was on song. So he's, you know, it's a bit of a roller coaster for him. Oh, Brandon Ryan did kick a goal. Yes, one goal, three, I think, in the end. Okay. Well, I must have missed the goal he kicked. That's when you nodded off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> uh, look, Box Hill totally put to the sword in the second half. Gold Coast ran rampant and... What did start as a really tight, engrossing contest ended in a 64-point defeat for the Hawks. That hasn't happened all season. That was a, a genuine premiership contender really flexing their muscle on their home deck. Josh Ward, 38 touches, one goal, one. No reason why he can't be playing the AFL side. No, he's back. You can't. You yep. can't. Can't ignore Has that kind of performance. been out for a month now? Yeah, about that. Yeah. He's putting his hand up. Morrison, however... There was nothing, watching the games, nothing inspiring about him, really. Just no, no urgency to bring him back to the seniors, that's for sure. Can we just talk about that goal from Jed Rule for a minute? Mm -hmm. Yep. Did that say something to you about the capabilities of this kid? Not just that goal. The, the, his body of work for Box Hill so far. Yeah, but that was... Yeah. That was an elite finish. Yes. Off one step. Left foot from 50 out, straight through, and kind of nonchalant about it. Mm -hmm. How was Wings? Uh, yeah, fine. Yeah. But again, like Morrison, there's no urgency to recall him. Yeah. I just don't see it. Fergus Green's starting to impose himself, trying to get in the eyes of the coaches and the selection committee again. Yeah, recaptured some confidence. I think he kicked three goals, two. Probably should have had more. He gave off one. Yep. Well, bit, that was awful. Yeah, that was an awful piece of play. Uh, too generous. I, I think Box Hill in general were a bit too generous. Like the senior side. What did they have to be generous about? No, just handball happy when maybe they shouldn't have been. They got carried oh, away with it. Oh, I see. They yeah, weren't, it, yeah, it backfired they, they weren't looking to finish, which happened yeah. a couple of times in yeah. the seniors. Yeah. I found that frustrating. Into the 50. And there were four handballs before someone even yeah, thought about no having need a shot. For that. Yeah, no yeah. need for it. Uh, Ned Long, 18 touches. Looked great before producing a far less productive second half. Obviously, the, the whole team, team was out. The whole team mind. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, look, Ned Long, Josh Ward, I agree. Get him to the side. ASAP, please. We also got done on the ruck here too at Box Hill. Yeah, that was... Um, Ned Moyle monstered him. Yeah, Ned Moyle v Ramsden. And uh, that looked to be a really intriguing contest, but no, Moyle took the points easy on that one. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, Remember, he was in our sites. I mean, the podcast sites. <laughs> well, the reports were that Hawthorne might be interested, but... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, he's, he'll be a good understudy, mm -hmm. and uh, but he's not pushing into the lineup, is he? Is he gettable? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> I mean, I'm not... Uh, we don't plug other podcasts. Yeah. Here, <laughs> <laughs> it is a good listen, though. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, next for Box Hill, clinging on to fourth spot now. Werribee has jumped us. I reckon Werribee, a bit of a smoky for the Premiership this year. They look pretty good. Anyway, we're clinging on to fourth spot. Yeah, no, they're flush with talent. Taking on old rivals, <laughs> Port Melbourne this week, Saturday, 2.05 p.m. So that's fourth, taking on 15th. This is a real good opportunity. Yeah, real good Jeez, launch a port, pad. A port that bad this year. Yeah, apparently they are. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, if this is the game where you want to check out Jed Rule strutting and stuff, you want Brandon Ryan to really show himself, you know, one goal, three. He's been better than that this year for the Bull Ants. So in a really good well, side, such as Box Hill, he could really show something. Can I have Brandon Ryan debut this week? I reckon, oh, this week? Oh, I reckon you will soon. Why not this week? Well, why not this week? That's a good question. When you get belted by the Suns, Cozzy wasn't showing much. Why oh, not this week? Oh, yeah, I forgot all the opportunities he had. <laughs> um, <laughs> Come on, he wasn't that good. <laughs> Cozzy he... got one touch in the second half and Lewis got... Oh, he got seven. <laughs> it backfired in real time. It did. That was delicious. Look to prove ah, the point. Ah, but Cosy had high pressure points, and that's what really counts. Oh, sort of reaching. 
How's that long bow you're yeah. drawing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so Box Hill with a really good opportunity to recapture some confidence after being smacked around by the Gold Coast Suns. Also, same day, so Saturday before the men at Box Hill VFLW team take on the Saints. A do or die clash here. Win, we're probably in the finals. Lose, probably season over. Last game of the season should be real interesting. They're neck and neck on the ladder, these two. Just the last one. Yep. Because their, their yep. win over Casey was epic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if they can carry in that form, they'll be fine because uh, they did that very, very well. But this is it. If they win, season continues. Lose is every chance it's over. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens Saturday. A good double header there, Box Hill, Port Melbourne, and uh, before that, Box Hill and the Saints. Anyway, let's talk about Hawthorne versus Carlton. MCG, Sunday, one ten pm Going to be a good day. I don't think Carlton are invincible. I oh, hope. really? Oh, you I, don't think so? I feel the by curse could... Ca- no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Look at their forward line. Yeah, no, we're stuffed. Oh, That's... Is that how... Is that, is that what we're going with here? Uh, if it's not McKay, it's Kerno. One of them gets us. Right. I just don't see how we suppress both. If we manage to, it'd be a bloody good win without Sicily. It'd be epic. Yeah. And... Absolutely soul destroying for the Carlton supporters I'm attending with. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> the the neat bonus. Yeah, but anyway, look, we didn't talk about DGB really. Well, in, in I don't box. think he makes the lineup. If you're there last week available, and Frost is still injured, and yet they give Frost the nod over you, mm. I I don't think he comes in. What, are you, are you, who are you going to take out for for for, for DGB? I would have said Scrimshaw, but I just don't think based on... Well, you got Blank and Frost versus yeah. Mackay and Kerno. Yes. And then you got Scrimshaw mm-hmm. making a nuisance of himself. Probably Silvani goes mm-hmm. to Scrimshaw, mm-hmm. tries to keep him honest. Anyone else available? Chengwath GF is reportedly available, right to go. Yep, okay. Well, he'll look good in the VFL because he hasn't played football in forever. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so you're not going to elevate him like that. O'Sullivan's available, but he'll play Box Hill. Uh, Jack is out till round 17. Uh, we don't have too many levers to pull. We've got a relatively healthy list, and yet DGB just cannot find a spot. You know, he's still got another year to run the contract. No one's jumped the gun. He was not bad on the weekend against the Suns. But then Why there was, was a complete, thrown forward. Well, it's, the game's over by that point. There's a complete avalanche of goals. Right. And so, so he he was fine until he wasn't. It was the ball use coming in. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But his positioning in the contest was awful as well. And I hardly think if you going to look, it it very much smacks a Clarko if you bring him in and play him on Kerno or Mackay, mm-hmm. and he doesn't, he could get five or six kicked on him. Yes. Which could happen to Blank or Frost. I was going to say, mate, that is every right. chance. But if you're anyway. going to do it, if you're going to do it to DGB, how, how does that look? If you're going to try and, mm. if he does want to leave, wants to go back to WA, mm-hmm. how, how are you going to put your hand out for the cash? Honestly, yeah. yeah. And what does it do to his confidence? Absolutely. Yeah. Which is not high at the moment because no. he keeps being overlooked. Yeah. Do no. you think they gave him games too early? No, no, no. no. I don't think so. I'm surprised he hasn't featured more this year, to be honest. Yeah. There's, a, there's an argument to say that he hasn't earned it, but at the same time, I hear the people on social media saying, well, we've got to know what we have here. The only way he's going to get better is to be exposed at that level. I understand it. I can see both sides of it. He's just a key defender, and they take forever yeah. to get good. There's so much learning, and there's so much bulk you have to put on to be even competitive in the contest. We're seeing that with, we're seeing that with Ramsden, who was put down back on the weekend as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if he if he can't put the weight on, then he can't play back. Mm. So, there's, uh, it's he, all right. He has good skills. It's all right, mate. He He's a goal on the weekend, beast. as you said. So, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, who takes longer to develop, a ruckman or a defender, key position defender? Generally, a key position defender, mm-hmm. because. They can't match it. A ruckman can at least, if they're young, can at least out jump yeah. an older opponent, mm-hmm. but not for long. So, <laughs> but if we return to our rucks and we talk about Reeves and Meek, 
Yes, exactly. We've got a question here from Reese. Is running two full-time rucks actually working, or should Meek, for example, just stay full forward for another target? When things are not going well, we always sub a ruck. So is it something we should just stop altogether? Well, it's a very good point. It certainly didn't work on the weekend, um, but you would have to say that Wits would have completely destroyed a soul ruck. Yeah, well, he handled both pretty capably. <laughs> Wits. Yeah, well, only four to advantage against three to advantage from Reeves. Mm-hmm. So, but in terms of getting at least first use, his hit outs, he, he beat both Reeves and Meek pretty easily. There's a lot of development to happen on every line. I think we were beaten just about in every position on the weekend. So, yeah, that's this, true. This is a real down point, and they just got to, you know, regather themselves and go again because they've got. A club, they could end their season on Sunday mm-hmm. and it'd be a great scalp. <laughs> what about the two rucks, though? Are you a fan? Because I'm similarly to Reese, I have questions around that. I'm not sure. I'm a fan if they can actually take a contested mark. Well, yeah. If, there's, if so they're providing it, no relief, then they're not worth it. Yeah. In theory, sounds pretty good. But yeah. maybe, maybe not in practice. As we saw on the weekends. No, you're completely right. I our agree our Ruckman totaled nine touches for the day. Mm-hmm. It's not, that's not enough. No, no way. Uh, this question from Ross. Given how young our list is, do you think going to the draft again is the right strategy from here? Or should we be looking to, for more experience around the 25-year-old mark in a trade or free agency? I say, why I don't not want it. Uh, no, I don't want any more mercenaries. Unless it's a very, very elite contested mark target i'm not looking to add just a cooler head in crises i'd rather have the boys come together in the same bell curve on the list and build a synergy and like you know a 10 man um unit that runs through the midfield Mm -hmm. yeah i think that's happening to yeah. be fair, I think that's what they've gone with. Well, I'd say you entertain both strategies, but as we looked in, uh, we looked into it with the mid-season review. There's certainly no one that jumped out at me in terms of free agency that I was absolutely dying to have at Hawthorne. No, Triple H, Harry Himmelberg at Hawthorne. Is is he a free agent? Is he? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe there's one. You loved his mark, even though we lost the game. You thought it was a terrific mark. Well, it was a terrific mark. Yeah, but it was against us. So. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I walked right into that one, didn't I? <laughs> this Did one... you see Poppy took a hanger on the... No, another one. Yeah, Is he still playing, for... still playing for Norwood? No, he's uh, somewhere else. Forgotten the name of it. Did he turn his back on Norwood for a lucrative 11-year deal or something like that? $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> he got up high. Goodness me. <laughs> I'm not shocked. And he's on the wing. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Middle of a pack, up comes Poppy, and it's trademark well, Poppy. Well, towards the end at, at Hawthorne, he was usually on a wing and running all the way back. That's, yeah. that's how we played him. Yeah. <laughs> running him into the ground. <laughs> Poor guy. Anyway, this is a question from Deb. Uh, I'm ready to move on from the roller coaster and try a new ride for the remainder of the year. What fairground ride would best describe the season we want to be having? What's the What's the one at, uh, is it... Um... It's a small world where they just go around and have a tea party. <laughs> sure. I was thinking more dodging cars. What, a bit of hit and biff? Take it to them. You know, you'll cop some back, but This is one thing in. that I think the AFL should include on the stats. They should just add up everyone's weight and divide it by the number of players <laughs> to give you an idea of the... So as they come out onto the ground, weighing in. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. At a combined weight of... <laughs> well, certain teams would sound much more formidable. 3,500 kilos, here they come! <laughs> Fantastic theatre. Yeah. Don't mind that. Uh, no, dodge them cars, line them up. <laughs> line them up, get a huge hit <laughs> on the teams that don't expect it, which is basically everyone. Look, we're 16th. I, I, wouldn't, I would say that most teams uh, would downplay playing Hawthorne. They wouldn't think too much of it. Oh, I got an opportunity against a few sides. That Richmond game stands out. Mm-hmm. Did you hear that uh, Hardwick's feeling like he needs to coach yeah, again? Yeah, already entertaining a return. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So well, what does he do? Just roll back up at Richmond? <laughs> See you, McWalter. Listen, mate, 
I actually haven't cashed the check yet, so... <laughs> so it's keeping the seat warm. If you just want me to rip it in half, we're good. Turns out all I needed was um, about a fortnight worth of buy myself. <laughs> now I'm back. <laughs> Really just needed a mini off-season. Yeah. I said bye-bye when I just meant bye. <laughs> Fantastic. Sim- uh, Simo needs to do something similar. We're back. Back to Simo. Oh, I feel, you, it seems like I you feel, feel for him. him. I yeah. do feel for him. Yeah. But also, you can't get away scot-free with that kind of pathetic performance. I mean, even Essendon, when we rightly told them all they couldn't play, mm. they put in better efforts than that. Christian asks, should we be starting to worry that Brockman has not signed an extension yet? Well, do you think he's making a better case each week or not, Nick? He had a couple of nice moments. That lace-out pass to uh, to Cosy was pretty good. That was an important one-on-one win. Um, other than that, I can't remember too much of his game. Uh, now, if you're worried about him, what do you think about Finn? Oh, Finn would be no chance at this point. Yeah. He's well and truly on the fringes and he's just not even in calculations. I dare say that some of the Hawks fans listening to this, at the mere mention of Finn, would have thought to themselves, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, Finn McGuinness, bloody hell. He's on the list and uh, not doing much of anything right now. Yeah, he's not even significant at Box Hill. No, not lately. Oh, well, really sobering podcast. <laughs> it's just like, it's an absolute downer, which is exactly how Sunday felt. <laughs> they can't what all be winners. What a way to ruin a weekend. They it's can't just... all be winners, mate. Some oh. weeks we're down, some weeks we're up. Hey, at least the Box Hill VFLW side had a big win over Casey. Yeah, that was massive. I, yeah, I really you, rated that too because Casey have a very good club. Especially being the Demons. You don't like the Demons, so you would have been pretty chuffed. Yep. Anyway, uh, yeah, we do need to start wrapping up. If you love the show, uh, you can spread the word about the Hawk Talk podcast by leaving a rating or review over on Apple Podcasts. Hit us with five stars. Get other Hawks fans interested in the show and get them on board. Meanwhile, whether we win, lose or draw, our social channels always buzzing. So head over there, join the conversation. It's a wonderful community of Hawthorne fans that we have around the show, so we'd love for you to be part of it. And of course, as always, a massive thanks to our proud, passionate, and paid-up Patreon subscribers. If you're interested in joining us and supporting the show, you can sign up at any tier, really, but most people go for the one with access to all our bonus content. And in related news, we put out our mid-season review last week. So if you're keen to listen to that, now is a great time to get on board. Hop on to patreon.com slash hawktalkpod and support the show. To wrap up, I thought I might share with you and come across as probably a little depressing. It was depressing for me, but I think it'll be funny for you. So so I'm going to give you this. All right, great. Because it's all all been up so far. So so please keep digging up. So Sunday, settle in, I watch Box Hill capitulate. I see Hawthorne do exactly the same thing. It's quite depressing. But I think to myself, at least I've got a great week planned. We're going to head down to the club on Wednesday. I've got scheduled, as per my membership entitlements, a photo with the 2015 Premiership Cup. It's going to be awesome. Got an email from the club, postponed. Both teams let me down, then the clubs let me down, and they've said, it has to be postponed due to a change in the AFL schedule. <laughs> what could that no, that's possibly a, be? Definitely a ding. Someone's dropped the cup. <laughs> so anyway, that'll be happening now. Handle's fallen off. <laughs> July or August, it's going to happen now, but... Uh, yeah. Come on, mate. You can't leave it there. You have to have some uplifting news. Give me something. All right. We'll finish on something uplifting. Champion of the club. Current senior coach. Sam Mitchell, inductee into the Hall of Fame. How's he going to concentrate on Sunday? This is ridiculous. Do they just spruik this on him or do they tell him it's happening? Or I don't know. I don't know what the lead up is. But you've got to say, I mean, all of his accolades... Absolutely a worthy recipient of the honour. Worthy recipient? Kane Corns must be on the committee. He <laughs> loves him. <laughs> I think, actually, I think Kane Corns is on the committee. <laughs> I think that's legit. <laughs> so anyway, uh, a huge congrats to Sam Mitchell, who uh, his accolades are only going to increase. As on a path premiership here. coach, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So on a path. premiership captain, four-time premiership player, Brownlow. God, the guy is incredible, and he's still got that hunger. Expert troll of the Essendon Football Club. Yeah. Whether it's the uh, the shot in the arm or winning the brown low that apparently wasn't rightly his, but then he was the best and fairest, wasn't he? And yeah. I, I do emphasize fairest. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's share it with show. Koch. To share it with Koch. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. That... For some for some reason, just out of the blue recently on Twitter, that sort of reignited. That yeah. bad, bad blood among fans. Uh, 
they didn't bloody deserve it. And I was like, well, yeah. Yeah, take it up with Essendon. That's not, yeah. his, not Mitchell's problem. Take it up problem. with Jobby. <laughs> That'll be it for the Hawk Talk podcast for another week. Hawthorne, Carlton, what's your tip? Hawks! Let's go, By Hawks. the length of the bye. <laughs> we can bounce back. We've done it before. We'll do it again. Even if we're down at half time. Look out. <laughs> Just never know, do with either of these clubs this year. Who knows what could happen? Get to the MCG, 1 10 pm Sunday. Either way, next week, recapping a win, loss, draw, doesn't matter. We'll be back in action here on the Hawk Talk podcast. We look forward to having your company then. We are a happy team at Hawthorne. <laughs>